in this house. So, as I said, the door's already open. Here's an outside space that I'm stepping out into. What is, what do I see and what am I in this outside space? Fire. Yeah. 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 Fire. Firewood. Firewood? Okay, I'm going to say a fire pit. So there's a fire pit right here. Okay, good. And I'll close the door. Okay, there is something of significance on this center coffee table. What is it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. A bomb. A bomb. <laughs> Um, this oh, window looks oh, out on the A circus! Hey, oh, circus, thank you very much. <laughs> um, we have an empty frame over here, except it's not actually empty. What's inside this frame? Well, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we have a Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a saying in this frame here that means something to the family. What does it say? Should have dropped. Uh, uh, Should have Shit happened. Thank you very much. Which notes with that? Oh, and finally, we have the good old-fashioned family couch right here. What is this made out of? Not a lighter. Not a Thank you. All right, so to recap, we have an outside.
outside area with a fire pit. We have a bomb. We have a framed picture of Nixon. We have a view of the circus. We have the fact that shit happens. And we have our fashionable Naga High Couch. We now present the fully improvised stage play, Beloved Strangers. Smokers is one of our best lines. This made us a lot of money. But oh, you're right. You're right. This is, me, this is me saying it. You're right. One more time. <laughs> you're. You're right. Thank you. Just because they're suing us, I don't think we should stop or believe that we did the wrong thing. I mean, those cigarettes are amazing. They're sweet and savory at the same time. And chew. Right? Chewy, and I'm not sorry that we invented them. I mean, who buys their children candy cigarettes unless they want their children to be smokers in the first place? <laughs> exactly. This is why I married you. <laughs> and the rest of your family. <laughs> you know, this is something that we will just have to get through because, you know, as your father, bless him, would always say, shit happens, and this is some serious shit. <laughs> should we look through the paper and see how many times we're mentioned today? I think we should. <laughs> Call there, out when you say it. There, there, there's one right there. Yeah, Call on two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Counting the mentions again? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey, Marjorie, Paul, Anna, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say it like that, Paul? Jack. Well, what are you expecting? Jack! That, Jack. Would, uh, that would indicate a level of pleasure and surprise at my appearance rather than tiresome boredom. This isn't cheers. <laughs> you are coming into our home at a very difficult and you are one of the few voices here who says that no, we shouldn't have had sweet smokers. We don't need those voices here. You know, we're already under attack. Guys, I'm on your side. We're brothers. Just because I objected to the business decision doesn't mean I'm going to abandon the family in this time of crisis. Now, come on. What can I do for you guys? Thank you for saying that, Jack. You're Thank welcome. You. you know, that man is a supporter. Mm -hmm. He is a supporter. And you can be disdainful at him. But Jack, I am slowly changing my mind about you. Thank you, Marjorie. You are welcome. You didn't like the bomb when we were in college? Seriously? And I've been dealing with your negativity ever since, and it's okay. Negativity? It's okay. No, Jack. What adult has a bomb? <laughs> Negativity. Okay, are you questioning our parenting now, Jack? Because I was so close to growing fond of you. There you go. Please don't mistake my disdain for Paul's certain peccadillos for disdain of the entire family. This is my point, guys. Just because I disagree with one little sliver of the family's behavior doesn't mean I'm the enemy! You're shouting at us. <laughs> and you just got Go an ahead. opinion piece. I mean, this hasn't come up in a while. An opinion piece. The Ericsons should not be allowed to live 
in San Francisco. What? <laughs> I, oh, that's harsh. I think that's intolerance true. is mentioned on our city motto, so it's natural. Yeah. Everybody should be the same. I, they're acting like we're the gentrifiers. <laughs> The hippies are the establishment now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sweet smokers! <laughs> you guys are killing me. But don't look at me! You guys are killing me. I've heard enough, Lawrence. No <laughs> one's dead yet. Oh my god. I, I, you know, I, 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 I just got the last, the, 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 the whole last bubble. Just all completely. Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. Breathe with, with me. I can't breathe. Breathe. Here's, Here's some ice breathe. water, Lawrence. Some ice water. I just. Careful, drink it slow. I, I'm drinking it slow. Look, I look, 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 why? I keep telling you. Look at the man. <laughs> I can't look at him anymore. He thinks it's a joke, but that man was a criminal. He was not a criminal. He was, he was, he was a criminal. He was, he was, he was in a very difficult time in America. <laughs> <laughs> that I agree with, but the lessons we take are very different. <laughs> <laughs> we keep that there for a reason, Lawrence. Guess this way. You know, it's important. Look, I, I, I told I told each and every one of you beforehand that, that, that you really should run this by me when I talked to Bethany. Bethany told me about the whole I just got the jawbreaker thing completely spooked over now. <laughs> Lawrence, listen. You're a great lawyer. Awesome. We love you, and you're doing such good work for us. Good work. The fact that we make really execrable decisions <laughs> is something that we all have to reckon with. It's not your fault. It was not a bad decision. Thank you. and savory and chewy. It's wonderful. It's genius. How does everybody in this film not know? That, 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 that tobacco is illegal for children. <laughs> well, who said that we were selling it it's to children? Not it's not intentionally. We're not selling You were pointing at it at the thing, and how could it not be? <laughs> there you go. Look, we're going to weather this. We're going to weather this somehow. We've got some funds banked. The, the, the class action lawsuit. It, it, it's not going to completely destroy us. Completely? Define completely. As in, no cash, no personal assets, all property confiscated, our license to sell products across state borders or whatever we do, revoked. I've got something to add to that list. <laughs> Please, for the for the sake of comprehensiveness. I didn't want to. I mean, I, I didn't want to scare you guys about this, but. We're all personally liable the way the corporate documents are drawn up. Oh, good job. Why did I, I did look at Larry. Why did I learn you into this family? <laughs> oh my god. I No Lawrence, you don't have to get it. Turn around and look at Tricky Dick. <laughs> and I remember you don't have to get that. You know, he was not tricky. He was he was a You were a <laughs> Oh Lord. Bethany. Jack! How are you? So good to see you. So good to see you. Under better circumstances, I'd be happy to see you. Oh, every day <laughs> has troubles. Hello. Mwah. Come in, Bethany. Come in. Thank you so much. It is lovely to see it's you. It's so lovely to see you. Did, did, did you bring the car or did you take a cab? I took a cab. Oh, God. I'm not. <laughs> I, I, well, uh, all right, I'm going to go upstairs. I can you, you have the computer upstairs. Yeah. Just, I'll just download all the paperwork. We'll, we'll, we'll just start the work on that, all right? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Whiskey sour? Whiskey sour. You remember when we used to sit on this couch when you were kids? And if you were wearing shorts, you'd stick to the couch. <laughs> well, I married into this couch. I remember. I remember. It seems like you've been here forever, so. So give like, me. I'll take that as a compliment, Jack, and not as a backhanded reference to my age. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the spirit. She's really warming to me. I can see that. I can see that. This bomb is just looking better than ever. <laughs> when things go downhill. You know, it's just good to have a bomb on your coffee table. Because it just reminds you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A bomb? <laughs> it's a bong. <laughs> With an NG on the end? <laughs> Are you sure there's not some kind of explosive? <laughs> well, you do light, light it like you light a fuse. It and does smoke. Right. It does kind of send you to another place. If you're doing it right. <laughs> well, as I was saying, it's just a great right by having a bomb on your coffee table. <laughs> Days, you know. Now, was that a Freudian slip? Did you used to make bombs on your coffee table <laughs> when you were with the weathermen? <laughs> you're, too, you're way too young to be, have been with the weathermen. Well, the real ones, anyway. She was involved in things in her day. Things? How many college? I thought that was all just a joke. That was pretty precocious, you know. I was pretty, pretty hot at a pretty young age. I so. do not want to hear that conversation. You should have seen the top side of war. I mean, I really just went down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh my gosh. Do you guys have any gin in this whole house? No. no. We well, should fix that. Oh, we're gonna go get some. You're, you're seriously gonna go get gin? You know I want what I want when I want it. In a few. <laughs> <laughs> Sour. Thank you. And some Manhattan for my mysteriously missing wife. <laughs> Cheers. Me. Cheers to mysteriously missing wives. <laughs> Personally liable. I'm sorry. You sorry? I'm sorry I didn't let you know early. Like when we were drafting the corporate <laughs> charter, <laughs> deciding what kind of company we'd be, maybe that would have been a good time. We're a family. family. We're a family. We belong together, against the world, with each other, like it or not. So, um, that's the depositions that they uh, think. <laughs> um, I, I'm How just, many are there? It, 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 it's a class action. They have at least uh, the team of them, and he's apparently going for more because he wants to make an example out of us. Are these all from children? Can well, the parents of children. <laughs> <laughs> so they interviewed the children? Uh, well, let's see here. <laughs> this one. Uh, Janine, I think, on there. Aww. Yeah. Let's get a picture. Aww. This is little Betty. Yeah. Betty was 12 when she had her first sweet smokers. She was... <laughs> I think she looks good with it in her mouth, like kind of jaunty. <laughs> oh, but they're well designed. They're thin, sophisticated. Yeah! And the fact that you we, we make those candy cigarette holders, too, kind of gives us sophistication. Audrey Hepburn asked you. Is a sweet smoker? I can't I just want this. <laughs> Wait, what am I saying? I'm this is sweet. absurd. Just chew one and you'll know why it's a good idea. I will not chew one! Look, this is... I have to go calm down. I'm gonna take a little... I'll be right back. Mm. I, I, I mean, I stand by it. I think these are incredible. Mm. <laughs> Notes of mulberry. <laughs> something. I, I just know there's something that I want to know why people hate us so much. It's because it's people who are out there trying to tear us. They've always hated us. They've always hated us. Because we are a giving family. <laughs> we are giving. I mean, we have. You know, always they hate us because we're up here, we're on the hill, you know. It's like, <laughs> they hate us for what we have. Well, you know, you're not our fault. I'm God not. bless you. He was a giving man. I would never be married to Bethany if it wasn't for him. Hmm? As a matter of fact, he's all you know, I got the deadline in on time, and he says, You know what, Lawrence? You are going to marry my daughter. And the next thing you know, we are. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these upstairs because I don't want anybody to look through. I really need you all to look through this. And it, You're telling our stories again. Uh, mm, yes, yes, I'm telling the story. So, uh, um, 
<laughs> why why do you have shame? I'll be in the kitchen. No, she's in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, why we, we, we talked about this. There's Marjorie. Is she this the kitchen? Is not the kid, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, she, she, uh, yeah, she went went outside. Um, out back. You ever feel bad bringing Marjorie into all this? You know, I mean, here we are, the family, we make candy, and suddenly we're always in trouble. You know, the exploding jawbreakers. <laughs> <laughs> the last of licorice. We knew it was tough enough to swing from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do. I feel a little guilty about it. I gotta say, it's true. She didn't know what she was getting into. Well, I didn't know what I was getting her into. You know, it's um, it's kissing. It's fate. It's just the way things have worked out. I mean, out. I like her. I feel like you're in, down in the trenches with someone. I'd be, lo I'd be happy to be in the trenches with her. You know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for saying that. Because, you know, I know you guys didn't always get along this way. No. But things have gotten worse around here, you know, so it's like you really mm. bunker down. You know, yeah. it's kind of like we're in a war. <laughs> well, it's a lot like we're in a war, actually. <laughs> and it's kind of completely like we're in a war. You know, yesterday I was at the grocery store, and this mother ran up to me, and she said, are you an Erickson? And I said, of course. I mean, of course I'm an Erickson because I'm proud of who I am. Right. I'm proud of who right, we right, are. Right, right, right. And she said, I can't wait to see you in court go down in flames. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to buy egg. <laughs> <laughs> We bring joy to children. We have been bringing joy to children for years. I'm just glad Dad is not here to see us now. It's. I feel like we were we were at the top of our game, you know, and he was there and he was happy for us. And I feel like ever since he died, it's just like we've been going downhill, court case after court case. But we can't all be like Dad. No. Not everyone can invent the gobstopper. <laughs> okay. He had a moment of brilliant focus. He saw that and he went for it, and it was perfect. And we've been trying to capture that. And I, th I think we've been doing good. We've been doing good in the world. We have been bringing a lot of sugar to a lot of kids. <laughs> it makes them happy. <coughs> Piper, but happy. <laughs> How did tobacco get in there? <laughs> I'll say it again. I don't think that was the worst idea we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Gotta try this gimlet, Marjorie. <laughs> Look, I just think that you're wrong. I think that there is no situation that is not approved by alcohol, right? <laughs> <laughs> have a seat, have a seat. Where? <laughs> Good thing my sister is here to bring me a second drink. Did you want one, Paul? Well, if he's had my drink, there should really be no need. <laughs> so, is, you guys think it's bad? What? What? Well, your drink is adequate. <laughs> my drink is freaking great. Oh, I'm talking about the lawsuit. You could have been talking about the drink. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's going to be okay. It happens. No, it happens. <laughs> I think it's going to be just fine. That's exactly the right attitude. You guys, just what dawned on me during my power nap. <laughs> <laughs> we need to buy into the fact that putting tobacco in those cigarettes was the right thing to do. Yeah, we need to double down on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double down. That's exactly right. I knew I liked your brother. Be Thank you. Because Jack. if we don't, if we go to the place where we say, oh, we're sorry. Oh, we sorry. Oh. Oh. Sorry we gave your kids to bad. Bad. <laughs> bad. We're bad. We're on our heels. No. Worst case, we pay a few measly kids some money to get them off our backs. Pocket change. And we can penetrate the Chinese market. They don't care about their kids. They don't put anything in their candy. Melamine. That's not <laughs> And you know the beauty deal about tobacco? It's got a little thing called nicotine in it. Guess what? Addictive. Nice! You know what? <laughs> I like this plan because it's not reactive. It's like proactive. It's proactive. Damn right. It's like this lost. It's like a fireball, and you've got to be running out of it. Just <laughs> don't. Know what I'm saying. I know exactly what you're saying. Just don't write a memo. 
okay? No memos, no memos. Everything over the phone or in person. No emails, no memos, no journal entries. But we need a slogan to sell this message, you know? We need something to really crystallize. I got it. But nicotine, really? <laughs> Please say it with me, everyone.
family, ideas were like currency. You know, her father, Richard, was a very domineering sort of man, and he was the inventor of the gobstopper, after all. <laughs> and he would always gather his children around before they went to bed and say, Children, are there any new ideas tonight? And Anna always had more than one. She remembered once when she was in the fourth grade, and she had had the best idea that she would ever had so far, and her father gathered them all in the living room and said, Children, any more ideas tonight? And she said, what about candy that makes you fall in love with it so that you have to keep buying it? <laughs> and her father was thrilled. Anna didn't know at the time that there are things that can make you fall in love with it. <laughs> she just thought that it was an idea that had popped into her head, just like ideas always pop into her head. And she knew as she went through middle and high school that she would use her inventing mind to actually make something of herself, to actually bring the family business into the 21st century. Because sure, her father had invented the gobstopper, but he hadn't really invented things recently. I mean, he had more than just riding that wave ever since the gobstopper <laughs> first hit the market. And she wanted to be the one to come up with an invention that would really make a change that would really put the Ericsons on the front page. Well, <laughs> she did get the Ericsons on the front page. <laughs> In fact, multiple times. And she couldn't help feeling this tiny thrill every time she saw the Ericsons men mentioned in a national paper. Sure, I mean, they were being mentioned for things that that maybe other people would be proud of, but still they were a name to be reckoned with. And that's what she wanted all along. She wanted her family and herself as one of the greatest shareholders in the company to be known. She remembered when she first told her father that she thought maybe the company should go in a new direction. And everyone in her family had worshipped her father. You know, he always had ideas and he always encouraged them to have ideas. But when she told him that she had ideas that would actually make something of the company, it didn't really go so well. She went to him one afternoon in his office and she said, I'm going to take over this company, and I'm going to make us so much money and so much fame, you'll have no idea what hit you. By that point, he was sort of into being a do-gooder, and he didn't really think that she would be the best person to take over the company when he was done with it. And so he told her that she had to run it with her two brothers, and together they would have good ideas about it what was legal and what was illegal and what was okay to children and what wasn't okay to give to children. Well, that was all well and good, you know, in the 19th century, but in the 20th century, in the 21st century, that wasn't going to work. And so, she hosted a rogue board meeting and she took the company from her father and since he wasn't at the company board meeting, which she had had under tricky premises, she had to go to his apartment and let him know that she had taken the company from him into her own caretaking. Hello, Anna. How are you? Come over here and give me a hug. <laughs> oh, you're so beautiful today. Look at you. <laughs> what are you doing today, Anna? Yeah. Making candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I try something. What is it you want me to try? Just shut your eyes. Okay. I like surprises. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's gone. 
Well, no, it's a toffee. <laughs> I can't figure out what it is. What is it supposed to be? Is it good or is it bad? Do you like the taste? I think it takes a little getting used to. But I really like it. Do you like it? Now that it's done. You make this? Do you want more? Did you make this? Yes. I love it. Yeah. Dad? Yes, Anna? I came by to tell you. You came by to tell me what? <laughs> Do you want to try them? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll tell you now. Thank you. Is this one sweet? Mm. Mm. Well, it's better this time. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it has some of that stuff, you know, that they put in Chinese food. You want a sodium glutamate? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good, it's right? Good. I mean, it makes things savory. Savory. That's the word. Uh, right? Yes. Clever girl. Yes. And pretty girl, too. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to check in on you and make sure you're okay. What's the real reason you come by to see me? <laughs> Not to give me candy and check on see if I'm okay. I wanted to make sure your heat was all the way turned up. It's getting cold. Anna, you know I don't use the heat. Can it's I too expensive. Enough? Of course I'm eating enough. If I don't eat enough, I die. I'm living. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask. No, you I'm not. your daughter. You're I'm stalling. Sure. You're stalling. Tell me the reason you come back today. I can see. You know who you're talking to. You're talking to your papa. <laughs> <laughs> Anna knew that her father wanted her to have a traditional life as a beautiful, pretty girl who made candy and got married and had children. And she had actually just had a Rome board meeting where she took his corporation from him. <laughs> she wasn't sure how to tell him that. And so she told him what she thought would make him happiest. And she thought that she would leave the corporation that was now in her name to a later date. I met someone. You met a boy? Yes. Oh, and we love each other very much. You love each other. This is wonderful. Are you going to get married? Will you walk me down the aisle? Oh, of course. Who else is going to walk you down the aisle? <laughs> Except your papa. What's his name? Michael. Michael, good. Christian name. <laughs> she had just hired Michael as a secretary for her new corner office. <laughs> I'm very glad it's not some weird name like Jared or Neil. Or something that's obviously not Christian. <laughs> Michael's a saint. <laughs> Michael was a saint, you know, he was a hero. He slayed the dragon. Very brave saint. He's not her. Don't protect your little girl. Life and she wouldn't talk to anyone, she'd be a hermit, you know, reflecting on her 
mind. And I am a much better person without that, Anna. That's <laughs> quite impressive, Marjorie. <laughs> Paul was the black sheep of the family. <laughs> to begin with, and in the middle. And then something happened. He started off being vocal about everything that was wrong with Erickson Candy Industries. He saw how, how everything seemed to be just part of a capitalist plan. He was completely on board with the whole socialist, and he was a car carrying communist party member. <laughs> He hated Nixon. <laughs> he went to college. He smoked his way through the first year. Just because he'd been sent to Harvard as a legacy, he was like, fuck this. <laughs> no, no, no. He was not going to have any part of it. And then his father came to him one day. His father came to him one day with a new look on his face. One of them. He wasn't sure if it was just too high, but it looked like contrition. Can you imagine that contrition on Eric's face? His father came up to him, and the first thing he said was, I'm sorry, son, I made a mistake. What? A mistake? His father was a titan of the candy industry. He didn't make mistakes. He made miracles. But he started speaking. Speaking to Paul on a level that Paul understood. It was like hearing his own inner voice. This company had to do good. This company had to find a way to give out to the world that had given so much to us. Us. The family. Us. And in hearing that, Paul began to think of himself for the very first time as part of that circle. And he became his father's closest confidant. They had lunch together, they had late nights together. Paul began to actually study and switch from communications to business. <laughs> he put the bomb away with love. <laughs> He knew they'd see each other on occasion. <laughs> but he also knew that he had a purpose. And his purpose was to take the helm, as the eldest son, take the helm of that ship and steer it towards a good course, a happy course, where good things came of sweet things in mouths full of smiles. <laughs> <laughs> and then his father passed away that was a blow to all of them. But they stuck together as a family. Everything was going to be all right. And then there was the playground accident. <laughs> and after that, their knockoff of the slip and slide, uh, slide away? <laughs> Someone slid away. <laughs> <laughs> Everything seemed to be going to hell in a handbasket. How could this be happening? His hands were there on, on the wheel. And he had his brothers and his sisters. His brother and his sister. Next to him. But he didn't know how it was happening step by step. And he kept on grasping for that, thinking, we can make this right. And there was the first compromise. Well, if we can't make it right, we can keep the ship afloat. And that's important. Because if the ship doesn't float, it sinks with all the good things on it. And who wants to throw the baby out with the bathwater? <laughs> he looked himself in the mirror that day, and his smile fell. Then he shook himself. He said, I'm going to take the Erickson name to happy places. This is just a setback. Another one. And somehow, every step down that road took him further from his ideals and 
closer to the younger Elder Erickson. His father, when he had been young and full of fire for the name, for the company, for the success, for the pride. It wasn't until the sweet smokers, <laughs> sweet, sweet smokers, turned out to be a little bit too savory. <laughs> but Paul had a coming home to his inner moral compass. He walked through the door of his extremely Extremely expensive home in Belmont. <laughs> it was gorgeous. The candy motif. <laughs> it was de rigueur in the family. And there he saw his wife. Marjorie was overseeing the cooking, tasting things. She had the cook out of the room because she didn't want her to cook hurt the cook's feelings if she didn't like the taste of things, at least not an immediate sort of way. <laughs> Paul remembered marrying her, such an idealistic woman, who had marched hand by hand with him down that little road. He thought, she'll understand. Sweetheart. Paul. Hi. I, I, I want to talk to you for a second. Oh, of course. She's... Oh, okay. Uh, want some batter? Uh, sure. Sure. Mm. Tastes good to me? Wonderful. That means it tastes good to you? That means it tastes good to me. Fabulous. Dinner on time, sir. Um, we have to talk. Sweetheart, look. Sweet smokers? Yes. Let me wash this hand. It's sticky. <laughs> what about them? They're not so sweet. They're bad. There's <laughs> there's tobacco in them. Of course there's tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole point. <laughs> what? What? You think Anna and I would make candy cigarettes that weren't true to life? Uh, what? Paul had had no idea. Paul had had no idea that he had no idea. <laughs> he had no idea that he was out of the loop this far. What, you and Anna? Well, sweetheart, it's just you seem to be struggling a little. Let me set this timer. So it doesn't burn. So Anna and I just had a little brainstorm. A little brainstorm without telling me? Well, it was a surprise. I'm the CEO. Look how successful they're doing. Oh, they're, they're, they're through the roof, but they're going to take us through the floor. Oh, what do you mean by that? I mean, we need to publicize what we've done. What we've done, it says on the box. There, there's a Surgeon's General warning. <laughs> it might be in Forest Green, and the box might it's be in It's got a happy oil. animal on it. <laughs> it's not supposed to, be supposed to mirror the real box. Is, is that a real warning? Well, it's certainly not a fake one. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would we scare it's a away? It's candy box for kids. I thought it was... For kids? Who buys their children candy cigarettes? <laughs> Everyone. 95% of the buyers of sweet smokers are under 12. Well, that's a little problem then, isn't it? Yes, it is. Those children are going to be harmed. We've got to do something. This is not what Dad would have wanted. Well, you would know your father better than me, Paul. They talked for what Jack or the Paul had expected to be. A minute and a half before she said, you're right. It was 25 minutes. Dinner was quite late. But he didn't care. Because she didn't agree. She said over and over and over the same sort of thing. This is what we need. It makes money. When 
when things are tight, we need money. This is what we need. This makes money. <laughs> That's your final word. Well, Paul, I want you to be happy too. Right. So Paul realized he was alone in this particular ship, wanting to make sure the ship was on the right course, which might be the bottom of the sea. So he leaked the story. Candy is so nice. 
It's so joyful. It's so harmless. Until you put addictive substances in it. <laughs> As if you needed a more addictive substance than sugar. But competitive advantage is a very, very strict task mistress. You will do what you need to do to make your margin. And with competition from far afield, the competition is not the candy maker on the next block, but a mega multinational corporation in China, or Thailand, or South Korea. Where am I going with all this, you might ask? <laughs> <laughs> One day, before their father had completely lost his touch with reality, and his life was still hanging on by the sheerest of threads, long after his beloved Anna had passed, Marjorie and Paul and Jack gathered to set the course for what would be the Ericsson Candy Company's next generation. It was a cold winter morning and they gathered in Pear's living room. Thanks, Anna. I'm surprised you came, but I'm glad you did. I keep forgetting that you're 18 now. Well, this is the conversation we've been talking about having. So let's have it. Okay. As the oldest Paul, you, you will be the CEO and you'll carry on the responsibility of leading the company. And we're all at your disposal. All right. CFO. CTO. Or CCO candy, I guess. <laughs> Chief candy officer? Why not? It's a good title to have. It's a great title. <laughs> it is our technology. I'm sorry, I have to... I have a meeting. A meeting? Yeah, a group meeting. Okay. For Arts and Crafts Club? <laughs> Thanks for coming and going. <laughs> Anna, Anna, this is important. You sure? Yeah, but I, think, I, I know I'm, I'm the chief candy officer, right? I get it. By the way, I, I thought your peanut butter, peanut butter turkey griddle idea was genius. Yes. Yeah, a little trip to fan. <laughs> <laughs> Nutritional balance. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and holiday theme. Well, all right. I'll see you guys later. Okay. That's weird. <laughs> I wouldn't read too much into it. <laughs> <laughs> this family. <laughs> Still waters run deep, right? Ooh. She likes her control. You see that too, huh? She'll have her say in all of this, I'm sure. Marjorie, I want you to be CEO of operations. I would love to be. Jack and Marjorie had a thing in high school. <laughs> Jack wasn't really over her. She was the most capable, beautiful, self-confident human being that Jack had ever met. She made his brother Paul a better person. And that's the kind of woman Jack wanted for himself. And he would never find her. Break it up, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
let the words out, otherwise I'll choke you and you can't pick candy. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know he didn't say that. You're full of shit. He would say, make it happy or don't make anything at all. I love your impression. That's a good impression. It's a good impression. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Jack? Tell me now is the time. We are taking a new course. We are going to have to sail a ship alone. Paul, I have to say I have some qualms about some of the new products. And I really didn't want to say anything because if they were Dad's ideas, I would be insulting him and his, his brilliance. And now I see that maybe his deteriorating mental state has caused a little bit of a lack of rationalism, rational thought. I mean... What direction do you see this company going in? Frankly, I think we're going to be doomed if we try to compete with the multinational candy companies. We have to differentiate. We need to be where the money is, and we need to be there take us into the right direction so that we displace those who would do ill in the world. That is our new company motto. It's going to be internal, just internal. <laughs> but it's our new company motto. We need to shove out the bad. Shove out the bad. Shove out the bad. Don't even look at it. It doesn't exist. Just push it out the door. Erickson way. Shit happens. <laughs> I mean, defend us against himself or something. Well, we're oh. being sued. I mean, right! Well, we're, well, no, well, we are, but not by him. <laughs> I mean, look, okay. Everybody raise a glass. To family, to getting through this, and sticking on the right path. And to make it easy. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our first two acts. We will now have a brief intermission, 10 to 15 minutes or so. You may make your way over to the salon for a refresher of your drink. We've got hot, fresh cookies for sale. Please keep in mind there is another show at the Tides Theater tonight. They're doing a radio dramatization of It's a Wonderful Life. We can go to that show another time, but please respect the quiet in the foyer area. We'll see you back in a few minutes. Thank <laughs> you.